Welcome to another destructible video. So here we're gonna make something that is pre-built in Houdini and bring that in Unreal Engine to make sure that it's actually a bit more optimized than before. So recently I saw the game Ascent and they also like used some destructible area pieces uh, which I'm gonna like try to recreate here in this video in a more simplistic version. So now let's start here in Houdini. So we want to start by creating a pillar and we're going to use that by a box. So we're going to just place a box here and from that we're going to make a basic pillar shape. So we're going to now grab our handle here on the side and uh, manipulate that into a pillar. So something like this could be different, it doesn't matter that much. Uh, we can also add some uh, scaling here. So if you want to quickly scale this up or down, you can also try and uh, place a test geometry from a human so we can sort of like get a certain scale so the pillar is super big now so we can scale a bit down if you want to and now let's actually just uh, place this up a bit in the height so it's like sitting a bit more on the grid and also let's copy the box here and we're going to add some side details or side bars uh, for support so something like this doesn't have to be perfectly like like you see here is just for adding some more interesting details here on the pillar. So the box, I'm gonna just play around with the position and rotate it until I found something that I would like to have uh, as, a, as a result. Now we can also mirror that in the other direction. So we have that on both directions. And now I'm gonna cut off the bottom part by a clip note. So this will just clip or cut the geometry based on the position. And now we want to fill this by using a polyfill. So we're going to fill the geometry back again. So they're actually like closed geometries. Now to make sure everything is one big piece, I'm going to boolean everything with the union to make sure it's like one big geometry. So this will be useful in the simulation. We can also now use something which is called the edge damage tool, which is a laps node. So make sure you have laps installed and you can have some edge damage by default. So this is a, a voxel uh, damage mode now. So as you can see, it's like adding more geometry and adding voxel. We can also do a boolean edge damage mode. So this is then the boolean result. So it's a very useful note if you want to quickly add some edge damaging effects. You can also play around with settings like dip using different noises. Uh, like the alligator noise is very interesting. As you can see here, it creates some cool effects. Uh, you can play around with the noise types, uh, the intensity of this. So maybe make it more subtle. So it's not like damaging every single... Uh, edge so it's like a bit more subtle like this and you could see like uh, parts being chipped away or like subtle cracks here from the alligator noise so that's pretty interesting to to have now in this uh, pillar so this is my basic pillar now now next up i want to add some basic uvs already to this uh, model so i'm not going to like go into like very uniquely texturing so you can for example do auto uving I will like automatically lay out uh, these, this for you, but I'm just gonna use a UV projector, which is just projecting based on the plane. So we have a plane here at the bottom, and based on the position of that, we're just gonna project a UV or texture on that. So if I now gonna use a quick shade to view my texture, we're gonna see here our basic grid, and we can just fill in a texture. So in this case, I have something like this. So I'm going to have a mega scan texture that is tileable and at the top I have a concrete part and at the bottom I have the debris chunks or like more rough concrete uh, stones here. So this is a tileable texture that I'm going to use for different amounts of props so I can texture a variety of props with one texture. So now the only thing here is to actually position this better so I want only the concrete at the top here. So I have this concrete uh, here and I can choose what I would like to see as uh, the details here. So this is my result. It's not perfect, but it's very fast to like texture this with just one texture. You can have, of course, to have different approaches. Now I would also like to use the edge damage here and I'm going to make a group from that. So I'm going to say at the color, uh, at the green, if it's zero, we're going to basically then get that red value. So now I want to do a UV offset based on that. And the easiest way to do that is just, for example, copying uh, the UV projector again. And I'm going to fill in that group that I just created. Now, often you should probably give groups by their names, like uh, Edge Damaged here, for example. So it's like a bit more recognizable here. And we can basically now use this to offset 
or have something more uniquely textured in that region so here I'm gonna like position it so it has more like the the chipped damaged version so as you can see now we have like that variation here that there are actually like some more chips or you sort of like see the inside material uh, of that uh, concrete so it can just be an interesting way of uh, of texturing this uh, but again you you can do other approaches you can bring this in substance and texture things more uniquely but this works well then next up i'm gonna sort of like think about what pieces i want to destroy so i want a pillar that is not fully destructible and that only sort of like at the middle it's destructible but it's still sort of like holding up in the middle so there is like some still support parts left so i'm gonna grab my box from the beginning so this is the representation of my pillar and i'm gonna copy that and then make a bigger version of that box and i'm gonna boolean these from each other so we have this but i actually want to have the reverse so we can reverse that or we could change it in the menu so this is my result now so i'm gonna then use this to then subtract from each other but what i first want to do is actually adding a remeshing for adding more noise so we have more topology so we can work with that we can also do a bevel to actually smooth out the corners so here we're gonna smooth out these corners so they're actually like not that hard anymore and we're gonna also then do a noise pass with the mountain node and we're gonna add some basic shapes so i'm gonna add this a bit more subtle um so it's not that intense like this but this is something you're gonna have to play around with and see what works best uh, for your model so now i'm gonna boolean these from each other as you see here i'm gonna boolean them and this will then be sort of like the damaged version so after i shoot it this will be the result when the pieces fall off so now i'm gonna actually have to go back to my box and i'm gonna have to make it smaller so by just selecting this and making it smaller this will sort of like be the damaged version afterwards after i shoot it and so you're gonna have to choose how much you want you can also grab the other box to sort of like define the area or the region of how much should be destroyed so i'm gonna take something like this i'm gonna play around with noises also adding a normal could be interesting uh, so we have something like this and again it's going back and forward between uh, the boxes and the noises and so on so we can define uh, how much damage we want so we can make it for example very thin you can even add some like metal bars and structures here uh, so this is just the version you build uh, after you basically shoot this pillar so now i have this result and check the uvs and of course we don't have any uvs for this so again you could uniquely texture this in substance uh, but again i'm going to just uh, do a similar system uh, by just first of all making sure i have a group for this so i'm going to call this damaged and the boolean automatically transfers a uh, certain group data so here afterwards i can only like specifically get this new uh, detail so only this value uh, is now selected so this is Im important to know that the boolean will also transfer certain group data so I can now use a UV projector and only say I want to project UVs that are in the damaged group. So as you could see, like I'm only now texturing or uh, projecting this area. So I'm going to just play around with that and uh, have some interesting here effects. So this is my result. We can also do a auto UVing. So if you want to do it maybe a bit more cleaner, we can use the auto UV. We can again use the damaged group only. I'm going to then also use the UV layout since I want to target the, this in a specific UV layout or spot. So we're going to enable here the rectangle and we're going to like grab and select the bottom part. So I would like to probably see my texture also in here so I know uh, where this is going. So we're going to go here into display options by pressing D and fill in our texture. We can also disable the grid here if you want to. And I can now specifically target this into an area. So also in the UV layout, make sure you are using the damaged group. So we are only texturing the damaged part that we have. And this is then my result. So this is way better uh, compared to, for example, the projector, which has, has some stretching. This is just more cleaner in the result. So this is my final result. Uh, and it's looking pretty good. And now I basically want to then also copy the Boolean and get the reverse. So I want to uh, reverse this and get the intersection here. 
So this is actually the part that will be breakable and destroyable and used in a simulation. Uh, so what you could do with that is we need to actually use a material fracturing node to make this into different pieces. So we can use the material fracture. There are other ways of doing different fractures, but the material fracture node is pretty useful for this. So here we have that. We can also do an explode node to see what pieces we actually have currently. Uh, but I also often would like to start from uh, one fracture level. So now we have two fracture levels, but I'm going to just start from one and build up from there. So we're going to say how much we want, like 70 or 100. So don't go too high. And we also can change the noises here. We can also do chipping uh, and also, for example, edge detail. So we're going to lower the detail size here to, so it will be faster in calculation. And it will basically deform the edges of the chunks here. So it will be less uniform. So if I'm going to increase the noises here, we can see that these edges are now like less uniform and more like chunkies. So before they have like these clean cuts from the fracture node, but now we're actually like deforming them. So they're actually a bit more interesting. So it's up to you if you want that extra detail there be interesting to have uh, and again once we do on this fracturing we want to also check our UV and of course we don't have any UVs on the inside so we're going to have to again make a system for that so I'm going to build something similar by the auto UV and the UV layout so we're going to do auto UV maybe do a auto the UV method and set our group so we want to use our inside group and this will automatically get the inside of the pieces because this is the output from the node. We can again just copy paste the UV layout and I'm gonna clear the group here and we're gonna make sure it's also set to the inside pieces. So let's check this result and it is still not fully working. So the reason for that is I also need to include that damaged group that I made before from the boolean. So we're gonna to have to include the damaged group and also in the UV layout. So make sure you're adding that in both of them. And now they should work. So now we should actually see a decent uh, texture or UV there. So even if we explode the pieces, so we should see a decent uh, UV inside of these pieces. And also here, the outside sh should still be intact as we had before. So this is all ready and done. And we are basically ready then for simulation. So if you want to do different material IDs, we're going to use the lab's quick material. And we're going to basically can also uh, use the groups to define uh, what should be different material ID. So as you can see here, I'm having different material IDs now just by using this material node. So that was a bit on material IDs. So now this is ready to go. We can also add a divide node to triangulate this data. So there are now triangles, so this could be more useful for the game engine. Uh, we can also now assemble this into a packed geometry. So I often want to do the simulation, I would pack the geometry into points. So these are actually now points instead of real geometry. So that's important to know. And I'm going to just copy paste this to the other side as well. And I notice that my pack geometry should be one because this is one big piece. So if placing a fuse node here uh, actually worked with that. Now let's merge our pieces and our pillar together. So this is then my result and we're going to use the bullet solver. So this is a basic node for doing simulations. Uh, so we can just already press play and it will probably just fall in the air. So it doesn't, so it needs sort of like a sort of like a plane to fall on a ground plane. Uh, but before we can do that, let's just match uh, size. So it's actually on the minimum here. So it's nicely sitting there and we're going to add a ground plane here in the settings. So we're going to add ground plane. And we're going to now re-simulate that and this is then my result. So it's still not really nice and we want some tweaks. So I noticed that we need to actually use the normal UV in the wrap. That will make sure our pieces are more attached to each other. So if you press the simulation now, they should be actually properly falling apart. So next up, I also want to make sure that my pillar is actually not moving. So we could either delete this and try to use this as a sort of like a collision system. Uh, but that might also not be ideal. And it will probably be more useful if it's actually in the simulation itself, uh, since that is also easier for exporting. So I'm going to just keep my pillar in here and put it back in the merge node. So I'm going to create an attribute, which is called active. 
an active is automatically recognized in the simulation. So when active is zero, it means don't simulate. When active is one, it means we are simulating the pieces. So make sure you are inputting first your pieces and then your uh, pillar here. So that gave me better results for some reason. So here, this is now my result. So I have the pillar and the pieces falling down. So very basic, nothing special. Uh, there are many ways of doing simulations here. And now I also want to add an explosion effect here in this system. So we have this pack geometry, which are just basically points. And what I can do here is I can use an adenoid and we can say delete everything but points. So this will only like visualize the points here. And I want to add a normal on the points for what direction they should be going into. So we can use a sphere for my implosion impact. So this is where the explosion happens. We're going to make sure it's a polygon and we're going to also add a normal node to this. So we're going to add a point normal, very important. So we actually have here these normals if you enable the view. And the goal now is to transfer the normal information from the sphere to the points. So we can use the transfer attribute node and we're going to transfer that normal. So by default, they should already work. So we should see like small uh, like arrows going in the direction of where the, sh where the sphere was. So this is basically where the impact happens. So where the sphere is placed, my sort of like impact or explosion happens. So if I place it on the side, all the pieces would fly in the other direction. So that's basically the goal of this setup here. So it's very art directable and easy to tweak. So if I plug in a different model, I can easily tweak that on what should happen to the pieces. So we can also like stretch this out to actually have the pieces more flying out uh, in all kinds of directions. So this looks pretty good to me. And now I'm going to use a little bit of facts. So we're going to place a wrangle node here. And we're going to say that at the velocity, which is being used in simulation, is equal to the normal. So the, basically the, the arrows you see multiplied by a channel, which is then called speed to control or boost that velocity. So we're going to press the icon on the side. And now I have a velocity or a speed slider at the bottom. So I can now say how strong this influence in, is in the simulation. So set this by 10. Now in geometry sprite sheet, we see our velocity. So this is automatically recognized in Houdini. And we're going to plug this in our system and make sure we delete this add node so we actually see our geometry back again. And now we need to resim. And normally they should all explode in that direction. So they're actually not just falling, but actually like going away from the pillar like an explosion. So based on like this sphere and the amount of uh, speed you set, you're going to have different effects. So here, if I gra drag the sphere up, they will just fall down because the direction comes from above. So if I move the sphere down, uh, maybe tweak the, the size. Uh, so it's a bit more interesting, like so. The pieces will actually jump up before falling. So if I now pr would press play, you actually see that small jumping uh, before falling so we can control this by here so we can increase this and now they're actually like really flying away so be careful with the speed value because i mean there are only like a few frames here uh, before everything like flies out the screen so that might not be that nice so we're gonna have to play around with different values don't make it too subtle but make it like still noticeable so play around with these values so maybe gonna grab my sphere and place it somewhere more in the middle if you're more experienced with VAX, you can improve this. We can, for example, say multiply a random value based on the point number. So each point has a number and it will actually get a random velocity now uh, for each piece. So some pieces will fall far away. Some pieces will go not that far based on that random value. So you could see that they're now like more random than in there. Uh, otherwise, every piece would like perfectly uh, travel a certain distance. So you're going to have to tweak these values. You can again improve this function to make something more uh, special. Uh, but this is already like a very interesting system by just using a sphere and a wrangle here to sort of like control how pieces are flying in the air. So just if you can control the velocity, you can control how pieces behave in the simulation. If you know more about VEX again, you can just also like do everything in one uh, wrangle. You don't need to transfer. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter that much um, it's, as long as it's got the job done. So this is now my simulation. And yeah, we're basically good to go. So everything is actually up and ready. We can also check our UV so since a, that is important. And we don't see our UVs and that is because we are still working in a packed environment. So we need to unpack 
add this here. So this is now my final result here. Uh, before I'm going to export this, I'm going to also create a no node called outsim. So this is, as so I know that this is the output. Uh, the cleanup destruction tool of labs is also very useful to know about. So this will automatically clean up destructions. So as you can see here, it will merge different pieces and reduce the amount of pieces used. Um, but in this case, it's not really needed since it's already like a bit optimized. But very important here is this slider here to optimize and merge pieces. So very important to either toggle on or off. Uh, but in this case, I'm not going to use that since again, my pillar is already like one big piece and it's a bit more optimized. So that's already uh, in place there. So I don't really need that. So let's go now to outputs and we're going to use our uh, rigid body to FBX node. So this will what I'm going to use. You can also use vertex animations if you want that. Uh, so this is where you could find it. Uh, but I'm going to focus here on the rigid body. So now we're going to also need to set a certain frame range. So I don't need the whole frame range. I probably need something around 80 or 90. So that's sort of like when my simulation ends. So let's say uh, 95 and this is then my full range. So that's probably good enough. And we also then need to set what do I need to export. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to use my out sim that I just created. And this is then my result. So I basically am ready to go and press uh, render at this point. You can set a specific location or other settings, but uh, you're basically ready now to export. You can also check in the Windows uh, built-in player uh, to view these models and it should work. If you see very weird results, you might need to do changes and re-export but normally you should see the same result here. Uh, more and more interesting is we can always go back and forth and do, for example, a retiming. So the retime node is very useful if you want to change timing of the simulation. So this could be useful for doing some afterwards, some post-processing of the timing of the pieces. So we can actually uh, control that a bit more, like speed up a certain part or slow down a certain part. You can also get like very funky results if you like play around with it and do something like so. So you're actually like really manipulating that time. So very interesting note to tweak or like finalize a certain simulation if you want that. Now in Unreal, I'm going to use Unreal 5. You can use Unreal 4 as well. I'm going to just import this. So I'm going to import a, a skeleton mesh here. I'm going to say none here. And I'm going to leave the settings as it is for now. Not going to change that much. I'm going to make sure I'm importing the animation. Otherwise it won't have that destruction. And also the scale here is 100. So I'm going to, the difference between Houdini and Unreal is 100. So I'm going to multiply by 100. And basically that's it. So let's press import. And now I have these results. So this is my animation. And as you can see, it works like I would expect. So it's actually like exploding. Uh, and yeah, so this is what I have for my result. Uh, notice that we can always... Uh, re-import this so here we have re-import animation so that's important to know like again if i want to retime this or do something different you can re-import that i also notice here that i have this weird normal issue uh, so we let's fix that here quickly by going into our properties and we're going to disable here a toggle which is called rebuild rebuild or recalculates normal so we don't want to recompute any normals just use the normals from the model so we have that result, so that's looking better. So now we can drag this in my scene. I can also here quickly add my material. So I have something which is called trim concrete. Uh, so this is then that result. So let's save and go into my scene then. So everything works here as well with the material. And let's test it out. So just grab the animation. Uh, it's a bit too big, so I'm not I was not always like really looking at what I did with scaling wise. So I'm going to just scale it down here in this case. So I have my pillar and we can also do initial position. So we can actually see now frame by frame uh, what the result is and is it looking what I would expect. So we have actually different set of pieces with proper UVing set up here. And again, you could do something more uniquely, but if we press play, uh, it already works. So this is my base result here. So we have a nice animation playing and you can also do uh, basically uh, particle effects. So you can just right click here and add particles. So 
and or, or sound effects so you can just add a notify so play particle play sound whatever you want so this could be useful for already adding some more uh, interesting effects so for the particle i'm not going to go in detail in about it i basically just took the vfx niagara one and i'm going to use a template which is already called explosion so here we have simple explosion so click on that and we can use that for our basic explosion so this is then a basic explosion so you can just like tweak it bring in more interesting shapes and textures uh, and then you can also use a blueprint sort of like game logic so i have a trigger box and when every time i shoot a trigger box i'm going to start the animation so here whenever there is a uh, begin overlap we're going to do once uh, play that animation of the pillar destroying or falling down so that's how a very simple very simple mystic implementation uh, for this for in your gameplay purposes so this is basically what i have now and this is also how i made that demo as you could see here so these pieces are all made with the process that i showed you so now the idea is that you could just plug in different models in the system and like tweak things change things uh, to have something like a wall or other pieces for destroyable and that was it for this video so i hope you enjoyed this video this video was a bit more different since again we did some more pre-baked uh, destruction so i previously showed you real-time destruction now i showed you pre-baked destruction so it's often a good idea to use both of, or both of them or either one of them uh, based on like what you want in your game and also performance wise what you could handle for the game so i hope you enjoyed this video feel free to like subscribe thanks for watching and see you on the next one